Welcome everybody. Happy New Year. Glad you could join us, especially those of you that are joining us for the very first time. Welcome. If we have not met before, my name is Johnny and I serve as the pastor here at How to Discover United Methodist Church. To begin this year, we are going to spend some time examining what we believe here at Hutter Discovery to be the five principal practices of a disciple of Jesus. So when we say we are followers of Jesus, these practices, these five principal practices are the steps that we take in this metaphor. And when we are faithful to practice them, we not only are better connected with God, but we're better connected to ourselves and to each other and to the mission that we've been called to as the body of Christ, the church. Now, there are certainly more than five spiritual practices, and this is not to say that the rest of them are not helpful. They absolutely are, but we believe that these five are the most essential to our walk with Christ and to our life together. So important, in fact, that they are integrated into our membership vows here at Hutter Discovery. So when you become a member of this church officially, you vow to uphold these five commitments, these five practices. They're that important. When you become a member here, you commit yourself to growing and maturing in faith through these practices. That does not mean that only members can do these things, but rather as a member, you have made a public promise, a commitment to adopt these principal practices. Today, we begin with the first one on the list, prayer. We have a short one today. It's from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Paul says in his letter to the Thessalonians, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Prayer. It is the easiest and most accessible spiritual practice that we have. It requires no special equipment, no special training, no special words, no unique time or locations. It can be done by anyone, anywhere, anytime, any place, at any age, for any amount of time. It's pretty wide open. But it can also be the hardest and most mysterious practice that we have. For so many of us, maybe even for most of us, I don't know, definitely myself included, prayer is much more of a discipline or a duty than it is a delight. You might even describe it as a drag. (laughs) It's the thing that you do if you're a good Christian, right? But it's very much in the ought to category rather than the want to category. Because we're all busy. It's hard to find time to pray. And when we do, it can be a little bit boring, especially considering what we're used to when it comes to mental stimulation. Our brain is distractible and jumpy and all over the place. And when we do finally sit down to pray, what we experience is more like what the spiritual writer Robert Mulholland once said. We are worrying in God's general direction. So we make excuses, right? I have young kids or I have an early job start or... You know, I'm trying to fit in my workout time. Or I'm I'm more of an active person than a sit and think and pray person. I have ADHD. uh, Or I don't know what to say. Or whatever the case may be. We make excuses. We feel a little bit of guilt. And then we pick up our phone and go about our day. (laughs) But let me normalize this for you. Because I definitely don't want this to be a guilt trip. Because this is normal for all of us, myself included. You and I are living through one of the most difficult moments of human history to pray. The smartphone alone is like a ginormous obstacle to prayer. We literally have multi-billion dollar corporations hiring the brightest minds in the world with one aim. To grab your attention, to distract you, to addict you, and to monetize that attention. And through it, 
we end up modifying our behavior. Now, I don't want to jump into some big conspiracy theory thing, but that's the truth. With the amount of entertainment uh, and distraction that we have right at our fingertips, we don't know how to sit still or to be bored or to be creative without our screens. It's more and more difficult. Again, you're not alone. This is all of us. We're also impatient. Why pray for my daily bread when I can just door dash it? Why ask God when I can ask Siri? And maybe more than anything, we live in such a cynical time. Cynicism is the air we breathe. So even when we pray and God does answer the prayer, we wonder, was that God or was that just a coincidence? My point is, if you struggle to pray, you're not alone. It's a struggle. It was even a struggle for people that didn't have phones back then. St. Teresa of Avila used to say, when it comes to prayer, we are all beginners. And she had saint in front of her name. When it comes to prayer, we are all beginners. And yet, prayer is the portal to life with God, the life that we all most deeply desire. Whether we identify that undercurrent of human desire as a yearning for God or Maybe we tragically misidentify it as a yearning for whatever else, significance or self-fulfillment or you fill in the blank. Prayer is maybe the most essential of our spiritual practices. It's the way we communicate and commune with God. It is the gateway to life with God. It helps us to, as the late Christian author and theologian and civil rights leader Howard Thurman said, Swing wide the very doors of our being to clean out the corners and crevices of our life so that when God's presence invades, we are are free to enjoy that presence in us. I love that image, to swing wide the doors of our life, to let in God's presence. That's what prayer does. Or, Maybe more simply and more modernly put, as Professor Kate Bowler puts it in her book, Good Enough, she says, the mystery of prayer is that we may never understand exactly how it works, just that it draws us into intimacy with God who hears us. How how beautiful is that? Pastor Kristen actually shared that with me this week, and I'm so glad she did. I want to read that book now. (laughs) But without prayer... We overestimate what we can do with our lives and underestimate what God can do in us and through us. Let me say that again. Without prayer, we overestimate what we can do and underestimate what God can do. This is why it tops the list of our commitments. And this is why the Apostle Paul encourages the Thessalonians at the end of his letter, his last words, if you remember nothing else, remember this, to rejoice always, Pray continuously and give thanks in all circumstances. Not give thanks for all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances. He says pray continuously. Or as another translation says, pray without ceasing. Of course, we cannot go around with our head bowed and our eyes closed all day. But we can live with a greater awareness of God's presence. We can, as Howard Thurman said, live a life that has the doors wide open to what God might be doing and revealing and speaking and urging in us every single day and in every moment. That's kind of the goal. We don't feel that all the time now, but our goal as we practice prayer is to live a life fully wide open and in God's presence. We can communicate and commune with God in such a way that forms and shapes our lives into the very thing that we long for and that God longs for us. So no matter what, I think we can all agree this. We might not agree on the how or the when, but we can agree on this, that if we want life with God, we gotta learn how to pray. Right here in the suburbs of Austin, with a smartphone in our hand or not far away, in the midst of the busyness of life, we gotta learn how to pray. And for some of you listening to this, this is just simply an affirmation. Like, 
for years or maybe a year or maybe decades of your life, like you have been leaning into this practice of prayer. And whether it's because you've had great mentors or teaching along the way or maybe somehow God has gifted you with this special spiritual gift to be able to connect with God through prayer, whatever it is, you're hearing all this and you're going, yes, it is hard to pray today. Yes, I have experienced the beauty and the delight of praying. It is much less of a discipline or a duty for me these days. It is definitely not a drag, but I feel it, and I wish everybody could feel what I feel. Yes, we must learn to pray together here in the suburbs of Austin, in Hutto, Texas, to see what God might do in us and through us and all around us. This is an affirmation, and I need not say much more other than give you that affirmation. Paul reminds us to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, and to give thanks in all circumstances, because this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Can I get an amen? For others of you, you're hearing this, and you're going, that sounds really nice, and it is the beginning of the year, and I'm really kind of in the mood for setting some New Year's resolutions. I haven't set all mine yet, and definitely prayer is one of them. But it's a challenge. It's a challenge because then you begin to think of when and how. And then you begin begin to think, well, I I should probably start big, right? And, And the reality is, is that what will happen is if we try to bite off more than we can chew, or we try to jump into the deep end before we've really learned how to swim, then We'll end up failing, and then we'll feel guilty again, and then we'll just give up on it. I've been there. I know how this goes. I have sympathy for that. So here's what I want to give you is uh, is some encouragement and maybe an idea to get started. If if this is you and you're thinking, I want to start this habit of prayer. I want what you're talking about. I want this nearness to God. I want these doors of my life to be swung wide open. I want, and, and yes, my life is busy. I do have young kids, and I, and I do have a busy job or a demanding job, and I do have very little time, and I do like my screen time. I like to watch TV. I like to do these. I have other hobbies and habits and all these things, but yes, I want to somehow make that time for God. Not find the time, because you won't find it, but make that time for God. And here's what I want to give you. If you struggle to pray, start with prayers that have already been written. Many of us, when we think we start this prayer life that we have to sit down with just a blank mind and in the quiet and then begin to just pray, and then we like get stuck because we're like, uh, I don't know. Do I just ask for stuff? How does this work? If you struggle to pray, if you struggle finding that habit, let's remove as many of those barriers as possible and let's start with prayers that have already been written. But you may ask, isn't that cheating? Don't they have to be my own words? Isn't that what prayer is? No, this isn't cheating at all. Think about it this way. When we learn how to speak, do we just start speaking? No, we learn by repeating someone else's words. Right? If you have little kids, there's always mom and dad are competing, like, say mommy. No, say daddy. Say mama. Mama. Dad. Right? We learn to speak by repeating someone else's words. And soon enough, as we grow and as we master the language, then we begin to put our own words together for ourselves to be able to communicate for ourselves. When we learn to write, we learn by tracing someone else's writing. As we master that, then we can begin to write for ourselves, and our handwriting can begin to take on all its unique characteristics that are uniquely us. But it doesn't begin there. We start by tracing someone else's writings. And when we learn to pray, we learn to pray by praying with others. Maybe others that have prayed and given us the words. That's something we do every single Sunday. We pray the Lord's Prayer right here in this sanctuary. Those are someone else's words that we pray and that can have meaning for us. And doing this is not some deficiency in you or in us or our modern age. In fact, our reluctance to do it is probably more of the deficiency of our age. This has long been a practice of faithful people for literally thousands of years to pray the prayers of one another. So what we're going to do is every day this week, Pastor Kristen is going to be posting on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Uh, If you're not following those, I encourage you to do so. You can go on Facebook or Instagram and just search Huddle Discovery and you will find us. Uh, She's going to be posting every day this week on those pages uh, a prayer that you can pray. 
Some of them are going to be straight out of the Bible. Spoiler alert, today it's going to be the Lord's Prayer, uh, Jesus' Prayer. I mean, we might as well, if we're going to be talking about prayer, we might as well take the one that Jesus said, you know, when, when the disciples said, teach us to pray, Jesus said, here you go. When you pray, pray these words. Right, so she's going to post that for us. But each day there's going to be some. Some of them are historical from people that have saint in front of their name, and others are going to be more modern from our more modern saints. Uh, but every day there's going to be some prayer. And I, pray, I, I encourage you to pray each one of those. Or if you come across one in the midst of that, if one of the ones, say on Tuesday, just hits with you, sure, check out the other ones, but keep that one. And just find a moment every day, or rather make a moment every day, whether it's in the morning, whether it's before bed, whether it's during your lunch break, whatever the case may be, make a time and then pray that prayer. If it's a short prayer, maybe pray it a couple times. Pray it slowly. Really marinate on each word. If it's a long prayer, maybe you only have time for it once. But pray them. And as you do, you begin to learn the language and the cadence of prayer. Not that there's some secret formula that only God hears or anything like that, but again, as we learn to speak, as we learn to write, as we learn to pray, we pray as, as others have. And it helps give us a vocabulary and a cadence and, a, and a, a characteristic of prayer that we wouldn't have otherwise. It removes those barriers of finding what to say. And as you pray that, if you find yourself moved to pray other things in the midst of it, do that. Feel free to do that. God delights in you being with him. Each day, if you are establishing this habit and this practice of prayer, Use these prayers that we're handing you to guide you, to focus your heart and your mind and your words. It may even help to pray them out loud. Sometimes if I'm trying to pray just in the quiet of my mind, I am more easily distracted. But if I can whisper them or say them out loud, if there's nobody in the house that I'm going to disturb, you know, pray them out loud helps keep me focused on what it is I'm praying. Praying prayers that somebody else wrote for you helps guide and guard your heart and mind and life into union with God. In a way, when you pray these words, you are joining and continuing a prayer that has been prayed for years, maybe decades, in some cases centuries or even millennia. And that's got to mean something. So much more could be said about prayer. I mean, really, how could we even begin to touch on all that prayer is here in this short time that we have together? That's why, starting in February, I'm going to be teaching a Bible study on prayer. It's actually going to begin February 1st, I think. It's a Thursday, the first Thursday in February. Uh, I'm going to have a, um, a Wednesday afternoon and a Thursday evening uh, Bible study. I hope you'll join us. More details on that to come. Be checking Make sure you're part of the, uh, the email newsletter so that when those details come out, you can register for that. It's going to be free, but we just want to RSVP to make sure we know who's coming and we have enough space set aside. But we're going to be teaching a, uh, several weeks on, on prayer, and it's going to be not only teaching for knowledge's sake, but some practical stuff as well, some practices of prayer that you can do at home as you seek to nurture this new habit of prayer that will really be the cornerstone of your life with God. But for now... Of course, my desire for you and for the church is not just that you would learn about prayer through these teachings or that you might experiment with different types of prayer that you're going to see on Facebook and Instagram that we're going to post, but that you would live more and more a deeply connected life with God in the busyness and chaos and noise of our lives. That's the deepest desire, that you just know a deeply connected life of God. We believe deeply that, that begins with prayer. And now, as appropriate as it is, would you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for this time together. We give you thanks for Holy Scripture that continues to meet us here today in this modern age. And we give you thanks that you are always with us, that your presence is always near to us. May we be a people of prayer, God. So many of us have neglected that practice or have tried the practice and feel like failures, God. Will you release us from that guilt? Will you release us from that shame? And will you invite us once again into your presence that we might open wide the doors of our lives to let you in so that all those cracks and crevices in our hearts might have your light in them and that your grace might fill them and that we might be whole and healthy and holy people and that we might live life according to your word and your wisdom and your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hey y'all, it's Pastor Johnny. Thanks for joining us today at Huddle Discovery Online. Be sure to drop a comment down below. Let us know you're here. And if you're so inclined, share this video. We love it when you share your church with your friends. And be sure that you're subscribed to this channel so that you stay notified when new content drops. If you're just checking us out today, we'd love to invite you to worship with us in person on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. here at Huddle Discovery United Methodist Church. Also, be sure that you're signed up for our email newsletter so that you can stay up to date with all that's going on in the life of the church and find out how you can get involved. If there's any way myself or Pastor Kyron can connect with you this week, click the connection link in the description of this video. Whether you have questions about the church, membership, baptism, small groups, youth, or children, if you have a prayer request or you'd like to find out uh, how to serve or whatever it is, let us know. We'd love to connect with you. And finally, if you have an offering that you'd like to give to the church today, visit our website at huddodiscovery.org slash give. There you can give digitally, a one-time gift, or set up a reoccurring and automated offering. You'll also find their information to mail in your offering if you prefer that. Grace and peace, y'all. See you again soon.